Plus, we continue our investigation into a war between protesters and the Church of Scientology. Tonight, hear from a former Scientologist who says that she was abused for years. It's a story you'll only see right here on News Channel 3. It's 11 o'clock. Time for news. Now, from the desert's news leader, KESQ News Channel 3 HD at 11. Hello, I'm Tamara DeMonte. And I'm John White. All this month, News Channel 3 has investigated a war between the Church of Scientology and a group of activists known as Anonymous. Last night, News Channel 3's Nathan Bach uncovered confidential security protection inside the church's headquarters in western Riverside County, including a high-powered sniper rifle. And News Channel 3's Nathan Baca joins us now with more on his investigation that you'll only see here on News Channel 3. Nathan. Tamara, tonight, another former Scientologist speaks out against the church. Maureen Bolstad says she left the Scientology Scientology World Headquarters near Hemet after a dozen years of abuse since the age of 16. You know, it wasn't informed consent. The Church of Scientology believes this woman, Maureen Bolstad, is one of the worst people in the world. She is one of a few to be declared a suppressive person. Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard declared so called suppressive people cannot be granted the rights ordinarily accorded rational beings. Her crime? Talking to the media about the church. Bolstad was recruited into the Church of Scientology at age 16. She was told she'd get an education and the chance to see the world. 26 years later, she walks down Gilman Springs Road where Scientology's world headquarters is located. She walks with a sense of fear. I lost like three years of my life staying out here and uh, the confessional procedures were, were just torture. They weren't to help me. They were to, to get me to introvert and, and, and think about what I've been doing wrong as to why I wanted to leave. But the reason I wanted to leave was because the sleep deprivation was killing me. I wasn't being allowed to visit my family. Uh, I wasn't getting paid for my work. And I said, look, this is abusive. I can't do this. I mean, physically, I couldn't do it anymore. Hey, 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 trespassing. You're under arrest for trespassing. No, no, of course you're under arrest for trespassing. Hey! When she tried to leave, Bolstad says guards tackled her much like they recently tackled protesters. When she tried to leave again, she says they placed her in the Rehabilitation Project Force, known as RPF. This special rehab center is located at the old Gilman House in the northwest section of the Scientology headquarters. Bolstad says she was assigned manual labor. Maybe like 7 a.m. or so until the sun went down, and I got $11 a week for that. And I got meals. I, I ate, uh, I basically ate in a, uh, they had a shack out there. I had to eat separate from everyone else because I, I was lower status and I was being segregated from everyone else. Bolstad didn't spend all her years in the RPF. To prove her claims, Bolstad showed us her Social Security tax forms. Despite working nearly 100-hour work weeks shooting Scientology videos, many years she earned nothing at all. She says the church forced her to pay for the camera equipment she broke when she first started on the film crew. What do you say to the belief the Church of Scientology is saying that what happens at RPF is only counseling? Um, I say that's a lot because there's a lot of punishment involved. There's um, your status is lowered. You're only allowed to speak when spoken to. You have to call everybody else sir. Um, you, you don't have the same privileges as other staff. Uh, like I said, you don't get your mail. You're not allowed to send mail out. You're not to make, allowed to make phone calls. I had trouble getting medical care. If this place is so terrible, then why did she stay for a dozen years? Perhaps because since the age of 16, it was the only life she ever knew. You know, like I laid tiles on all those roofs over there. I, I painted a lot of the rooms in that, that quad building when it was originally painted. Uh, I helped paint some of these sidewalks, stain the, some of these sidewalks. There's like every, everything here has my blood, sweat, and tears in it. And I, I thought it was my home. I considered this place my home, and that's why I was investing in it. We will have the second half of our interview with Maureen Bolstad Wednesday night at 11. Bolstad tells her account of 12-year-olds working in the church headquarters and women coerced to have abortions or risk being declared a suppressive person by Scientology leadership. So we are continuing our investigation. We'll have plenty more coming up. Quite and a story. As this investigation goes on, uh, you're not getting any comment from the church now. So far not. We have uh, News Director uh, Bob Smith has extended uh, the offer to uh, Tommy Davis, who we've interviewed before. Uh, to have some sort of comment. We still haven't got that just yet. Um, if we're going to be interviewing somebody else, uh, we look forward to interview with church leader David Miscavige. All okay, right. we'll thank see what happens. Plus, a war between protesters and the Church of Scientology tonight. 
part two of our interview with a former Scientologist who claimed she was abused for years. It's a story you'll only see on News Channel 3. It's 11 o'clock. Time for news. Now from the desert's news leader, KESQ News Channel 3 HD at 11. Hello, I'm John White. And I'm Tamara DeMonte. News Channel 3 continues its investigation of the war between the Church of Scientology and a group of activists known as Anonymous. In our last investigative segment, News Channel 3's Nathan Baca talked to one former Scientologist sharing her account of years of abuse inside the church. And Saint Nathan is here with more on this investigation you will only see on News Channel 3. Nathan. John, child labor and coerced abortions. It's a chilling inside account of what a growing number of former Scientologists are saying actually happens inside their local headquarters. I was actually one of the older ones at 17. There were 13-year-olds, 12-year-olds. There's just one kid, 12-year-old. He got given an executive responsibility doing something, and he had a complete nervous breakdown. This is how Maureen Bolstad spent her teenage years, making videos for the church. And looking at her Social Security tax form, she says nobody ever told her about minimum wage. I was taught to lie, too, to, to officials. Like whenever I had to fill out a, uh, a workers' comp claim form, they ask you how many hours do you work a week, and I was told to put 40 hours. So you were told by management to lie on official paperwork? Yeah, by the legal director here. It's like, don't put, don't put how many hours you really work, just put 40 hours. And nobody ever told her about the facts of life. If a woman gets pregnant and does not abort the child, then they are declared a suppressive person. Why? Because uh, it's, it kind of started out gradually. The first thing was that uh, the Church of Scientology International did not want to pay for child care. There are two versions of the truth here. The church says it is one of the fastest growing religions with 8 million strong and growing. But a Trinity College religious census shows only 25,000 Scientologists in the United States and shrinking. The Church of Scientology wants everyone to believe every former Scientologist is lying about their years in the church. They want you to believe asking questions. Well, this is about the fundamentals. And the practice. Of your, of, this is not about the fundamentals of your belief, though. This, well, this the, thing, comes into a, the sense here's of the, the thing. Here's the, the thing. Here's the thing. Right. It was furthering a negative agenda. And you're just forwarding an agenda of uh, of hate. They want you to believe their church is like any others. Never mind, they have an extensive intelligence department with training documents on how to misdirect journalists and actually have a training routine on how to lie to others. So if Scientology's point of view is correct, Maureen Bolstadt is one of the worst people alive. The church declared her a suppressive person for talking to the media. Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard declared so-called suppressive people cannot be granted the rights ordinarily accorded rational beings. In Bolstadt's case, that includes never hearing from those she knew inside Scientology, including her own twin sister. Um, I do not know where my sister is, actually. She, her last uh, known address was here. Uh, I lost, uh, she hasn't spoken to anybody in her family since uh, 2006. I don't even know if my sister is even alive. Now, we have our full 45-minute interview with uh, Scientology spokesperson Tommy Davis on our website, ksq.com. Now, they have not returned our attempts to contact them since our investigations began three weeks ago, so we're continually extending our interview invitation to church leader David Miscavige. So we have some questions we'd like to ask him. If he's watching online, uh, he knows where to find us. All right. What can we expect next from you, Nathan? Well, for the next few weeks, we're going to be still collecting some information, mostly about the IRS tax exemption that the Church of Scientology has. Uh, we'll be looking to actually air some pieces within the next uh, two or three weeks or so. All right. Okay. We'll see that. Thank, Thank you. you, Nathan.